On the way to the fire, of course, well, the first thing I try to do is visualize the, the building that I'm going to. Have, having been in Yonkers all my life, uh, I, I kind of have the opportunity to know a lot of the, the locations in town, and then you try to give it your own size up on the way in. There are few fire photographers like Tom Wanstall. The unparalleled way he captures the excitement, the drama of a fire and firefighters is his trademark. Recognized by his peers in the International Association of Fire Photographers as a master, Tom Wanstall is as intriguing as his photos. When not on the fire scene, I spend a great deal of time photographing architecture, landscape architecture. I like working on special projects. Spent three or four years just photographing vineyards and wineries and produced a couple of calendars on that subject. But that, that's where my living comes from. The, the fire photography is what you do in between while you're, while you're waiting for the fire, you go out and you photograph the architecture. I've managed to, uh, to publish three books, Fire in Focus, FDNY New York's Bravest that I did in conjunction with George Hall, and the latest was Fire at War with the Red Devil, which is uh, a, a true picture book from cover to cover. In his hometown, Yonkers, just north of New York City, Tom is as much a fixture at fires as the fire department. One of the byproducts of, of, the, of this fire photography is you, you make a lot of good friends, a lot of new friends. Uh, lot, lots of good firehouse round the table chatter. And not only local friends, you make, you make friends all over the country, indeed all over the world. And over the years, I've been fortunate to have made a great many friends and been allowed to sit in on the firehouse capers and, and derive the enjoyment that's, that's there. For people who don't know, one has to realize that nothing is sacred in the firehouse. Nothing is sacred. We find him on the corners now and again, and he runs around with these funny little, uh, you know, the Fuji paper cameras. Uh, what it is, is he, he bought it like a, a whole sack full of them, and he gave them to all the guys. And uh, as the guys would use them up, uh, he collect them. And the first thing we know, he come out with a book. And then he's been coming out with calendars from all these things. And, you know, not for nothing, but I never realized you'd get such a good picture from a little Fuji uh, paper camera. He, uh... Claims he gets all these pics, but uh, I have to run around with my trusty little Polaroid and catch the pictures for Tom so that he can have pictures with flame. Because as I said, by the time he gets down there, the fire is darkened down. As much as Wanstall enjoys a good laugh, and that's an understatement, he has nothing but praise for the firefighters he shoots. A couple of my favorites, Chief Bill Webster and his, his aide, uh, Bruce Charlton, these guys typify firehouse life. There's a lot of laughs and, and a lot of fun and stories to, forever. But what I must say is, on the fire scene, these are two of the best professionals you'll find anywhere. The respect is shared. He lives his craft and his craft is an outstanding photographer. Not only fire work, but he does other kinds of uh, photography. And he lives his work. That's, uh, that's the reason it's the quality that he, it is. He knows the city like the palm of his hand. He, uh, he's right there, he's there with the first arriving rigs, usually before we get a second or greater alarm in. And he gets his pictures, and it's good for the uh, department, it's good for him. It's good for morale of the department that they see these pictures and they make the uh, newspapers and whatever. The Wanstall home is an apartment that reflects his love for the fire service. We got the, the, the dark, the complete dark room. We've got the complete editing and sorting room. We got the fax. We've got the telephones. Uh, it's a truly unique experience to visit it.
a sidebar to this this whole fire buffing thing of course I got into collecting uh, model and toy fire trucks and of course I just have a load of them Tom's invariably listening to a scanner if an alarm sounds worthwhile he springs into action you might get there and might be the big burner you might get there and it's not the big burner you, you expected but nevertheless time is not wasted at the fire scene because uh, there's a lot of hellos and, and uh, camaraderie and you practice that while you're there and again even if it's not the big one uh, there, there are still other picks to be had. This master of flames on film encourages photographers hoping to follow in his footsteps to develop their own special feel for shooting all that goes on at a fire. Keep track of the basics, make sure the simple things like focus and exposure are correct, and then after that, begin to develop a style. Always like a good job, always like a good job. But the emphasis does, doesn't have to be uh, just on the flames and and the burning building uh, in fact that oftentimes that's that's an error that newcomers tend to make is that they only look at the fire and don't look around them and a lot of a, a lot of your best photographs often come from the scene beyond the fire itself if you look to your left you look to your right look behind you you're liable to find a, a super picture the firefighter's got a, a tough, tough job, and time is of the essence. He can be your best friend, but do him a favor. Get your shots, get in, and then get out of his way. I'm sure that if you cooperate with them, you'll find out that they're going to cooperate with you. They can be your best friend. You're in a photo of Tom Weinstall's. It's like stardom, because not too many people make them. Uh, he gets them in there, you're going to get a shot in where you know you were doing your job. He doesn't take just a picture to put somebody in a calendar or in a book. He's taking a picture of that person actually doing a good job at a working fire. 